Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and the question is, MacBook Pro 14 or 16? Is bigger always better? I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. So the new 2023 Pros take what was already pretty much the best laptop in the market for most of us and adds the faster M2 Pro and Max chips, better connectivity with Wi-Fi 6E and HDMI 2.1, plus an extra hour of battery life and some minor optimizations to the webcam. Good stuff. The only problem is, outside the US at least, these are also a good deal more expensive, like three to 400 pounds more. And also they're not that much of an upgrade. There's nothing you can really do with these that you couldn't with the old ones. They're just a bit faster and a little bit more refined. They're not gonna be for everyone, but if you do have deep pockets and you do fancy upgrading your laptop, whether it's to these new models or the older 2021s, which size should you go for? If I bring up the specs of the 14 and the 16 side by side, you can see there are four main differences. The M2 Pro chip on the base models is a little bit different, the size and the weight, battery life, and of course, the price. So the new MacBook Pro 14 starts at $2,000 or £2,150, whereas the 16 starts at $2,500 or £2,700. Regardless of how eye-wateringly expensive these things are anyway, paying 550 quid more for this guy seems like an awful lot of money, but it's not that straightforward. Because you do also get a faster 140 watt power adapter thrown in for free with the 16, whereas it will cost you a whole 10 pounds to bump the 14's basic 67 watter to a 96 for faster charging speeds. Okay, that may not be a deciding factor. What is more important is there is a difference in performance because the M2 Pro in the base 16 inch gets a 12 core CPU and a 19 core GPU, whereas the entry level 14 gets 10 and 16 cores respectively. And it'll cost you 350 pounds to upgrade it to bring them in line. Does it make much of a difference? Well, I have the entry level model of both sizes here and the answer is yes, actually. Either way, you're getting a solid step up over the older M1 Pros. And so performance isn't exactly in short supply here, but the extra two CPU and three GPU cores average out to be a 14% boost, which is more significant than I had expected, particularly for the CPU. If you do bump up the 14's M2 Pro to the same level as the 16, then the price difference then becomes just 200 pounds and then all the way up to the same max spec. They can both go all the way up to an M2 Max, 96 gigs of their fancy unified memory and a whopping eight terabytes of storage, which will cost you somewhere in the region of a 2015 Ford Fiesta, which is nuts. To be honest though, these guys are already incredibly fast. And so for my money, I would just go with the base model. The M2 Pro with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 storage, which is what you get with the entry level, I think is probably the perfect spec. Which means the price difference then does go back to 550 pounds, which is quite a lot. Quick side note though, actually, while I've got you and we're talking about performance, how does the M2 Pro compare with the M2 Max? Well, let me bring over this guy, which a uh, little uh, behind the scenes, scripting action going on there. But this is my review sample from Apple. This has the M2 Max. I bought these two myself. So we've got the two M2 Pros with the slightly different core counts and then the basically top spec M2 Max. There are other variables, like I have more RAM with the Max, but this gives you a rough idea. And you can see the big difference is in graphics power with a whopping 65% boost. Plus the Max has a faster media encoder, you can output to more external displays, and specifically, if you do spec the 16 inch with a Max, you get this high performance mode, which is hidden away in the battery settings. And this lets the fan wear up a little bit more to give you slightly better sustained performance. And again, this is exclusive to the 16 inch Max. What did surprise me though, is that the heat and the cooling and the fan noise were pretty much the same between them, which is kind of impressive given how much less volume the 14 inch has and therefore less space for heat dissipation. In my testing so far, I haven't found any significant difference there. Where there is a significant difference is the battery life. Apple claimed the 16 inch will give you 22 hours of movie playback and 15 hours of web browsing, while the 14 gets you 18 and 12 hours respectively, roughly a 20% shorter battery life. And that actually does tally with my experience. All those benchmarks I just showed you, I started with 100% battery life, ran the tests. This was then down to 70%. This was down to 81. So there is a definite advantage of battery life going with the 16 inch, but I don't think it's a deal breaker. The 14 still offers one of the best battery lives you can get on a laptop. And considering the performance you get with this, not least the performance on battery, which is like the same thing, which you just can't get with any kind of Windows equivalent. This is still very, very good. It will last you all day. 
But if you are away from the charger a lot and you particularly run a lot of demanding workloads, then the 16 is definitely worth considering. Now, a big thank you to Surfshark VPN for very kindly sponsoring this video because whatever your setup looks like, staying safe and protected online is so important. Which is why I use Surfshark, because there's an app for pretty much every device. There's even a handy Chrome extension. One account lets you use an unlimited number of devices, which is great for the family or if maybe you're a tech YouTube creator and switch phones and laptops all the time. And because their clean web tool is fantastic as it helps prevent ads, tracking, malware, and other nasty stuff while you're browsing. So if you do fancy giving Surfshark a try, click the link in the description below or use the code TECHCHAP at the checkout to get a whopping 83% off and three months extra for free. And with a 30 day money back guarantee, there's nothing to lose. Now the biggest advantage, aside from the cheaper starting price of the 14, is of course its size. If you're a regular on the channel, you know that I've been using the 16 inch as my main work and everyday laptop for well over a year now since the 2021 models came out and now I've uh, upgraded to the M2 Max. And the bigger screen does come in handy for watching movies in hotel rooms or uh, you know editing a complex video in Premiere Pro or just having a couple of tabs side by side. You do get quite a lot more desktop screen space with this. But I also travel a lot, and every time I put this in my backpack or my suitcase, I think, oh, I wouldn't mind having the 14 inch instead. It is noticeably lighter. We're talking 1.6 kilograms versus 2.1. And actually, overall, we're looking at a 28% smaller footprint. And it's also 1.3 millimeters thinner, although you'd be hard pressed to tell unless you had them side by side. But the 14 is a lot easier to lug around all day. And to be honest, with the 16, I have sometimes struggled to fit it on an economy plane seat tray table. I've had to put it on my lap and bring it out in a coffee shop. You definitely get a few looks because uh, it is a pretty big laptop. So for subtlety, uh, the 14 is definitely nicer. This is more of a desktop replacement. Plus, because these new models have the improved connectivity uh, with HDMI 2.1, in addition to the three Thunderbolt 4 ports, uh, you can now output via HDMI to a 4K 240 or an 8K60 display. Thunderbolt is still better in most ways and it can charge the laptop that way, HDMI can't. But because you can output to more displays now, which may not have Thunderbolt or display ports like these guys, it means you have a whole lot more options for outputting to a external monitor, which means if you are working in a studio or your office or at home with a second screen, the screen size on your laptop becomes a little bit less important and portability becomes more of a priority. And considering how you get the exact same performance on batteries you do plugged in, which is one of the biggest selling points of MacBooks for me, the mobility of MacBooks I think lends itself to the smaller and lighter 14 inch. One tip though for either size, but particularly on the 14, is enabling the auto show and hide dock setting, which frees up a decent chunk of space on the screen. So let's wrap this up. And the 16 gives you more desktop screen space, obviously, roughly a 20% longer battery life. The more powerful M2 Pro you get with the base model compared to this uh, is roughly sort of 14, 15% faster. And if you spec the 16 with an M2 Max, then you unlock that high performance mode. Whereas the 14 inch is a whole lot more portable. It's half a kilogram lighter and nearly a third smaller in terms of overall volume. And since we have better connectivity now and full performance on battery life, arguably it makes more sense to have the smaller 14 plus it's a lot cheaper and again going back to the uh, comparison of the base spec 550 pounds more for the 16 definitely stings but if i was going to go out and buy one of these for myself right now i would go with the 14. I think I would, I'd save the money. And I would go with the cheapest model as well. Or actually, you know what I would do? I'd try and get an M1 Pro 2021 14 inch instead and save a whole lot of money. But the truth is these are both absolutely incredible laptops and as close to the perfect laptop, in my opinion, uh, unless you wanna do some proper gaming, in which case you need Windows, that you can get right now. The only problem is they're really bloody expensive. <laughs> But what about you, 14, 16, or neither? Let me know in the comments below. Also check out my full 16 inch M2 Max review by clicking here and stay tuned for lots more comparisons. Thank you so much for watching guys. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.